Well, well, well. Very good to join you to here today. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Clam Bar, 3914 Brewerton Road, North Syracuse, New York. The biggest little place in Syracuse. Uh, wow. Just finished watching this game. Syracuse pulled away. Syracuse, they caught him, pulled away. Syracuse wins, double overtime, 110 Indiana, 112 Syracuse. That's a lot of stuff. That a lot of things happened during this game. A lot of things to unpack. Um, man, that was for a Syracuse fan that was there at the game. It must have been fantastic because the energy that you could see going the ebb and flow, the ebb and flow of the game must have been uh, amazing. So, uh, I, where, where do we start? Let's start off by reading the. Um, let's see what we got here. Um, there was a lot of everything going on. Syracuse came out in the first half. Uh, there was great focus, quick hands, five guys rebounding. Um, in that particular time, Jesse Edwards was unstoppable scoring, and he also had four steals. Um, he had a very solid, a very solid start against a phenomenal Trace Jackson Davis, who, by the way, was just a beast on the inside. Jesse held his own and kept him under control for the major part of the game. Um, he was, I mean, he plugged the middle. He did, he did his job. But to win this game today, Syracuse needed all every player, almost every player on that bench because uh, kudos to Frank Anselm. And uh, he came in, got some big rebounds. Um, man, there's just, there's just, there's just uh, so much to, to unpack here. Um, first half, Syracuse stuck to the game plan. They kept it packed in around uh, Trace Jackson Davis. And that gave them the opportunity to pull off to a pretty good lead. Uh, what else did I notice? Um, and then we got, uh, let's see here. So Syracuse basically did what they're supposed to the first half, came out the second half. And as you know, uh, Indiana, they're not going to be undefeated coming into Syracuse without being a tough team and without being able to come back from. Uh, adversity and they so they got back into the game and it was nip and tuck and you know I'm sitting here right now and that game the ebb and flow of that game was oh it had to be it had to go back and forth six seven times you know the thing that I really like about uh this this game is I, I wrote down SU needs SU needs an identity SU needs a character and what I was talking about was they needed a they needed a tough win that can let people know that, hey, pay attention to us. Um, this Indiana team played as tough as, as any team that I've seen. Uh, Syracuse hit big shots. You know, we uh, as, it, it was, as it was coming down to the, in the second half, there was a, a statement said, bad SU shots lead to good Indiana University transition shots. And that's basically what we did. Uh, Syracuse came down, took some poor shots. The ball bounced out long. Um, it bounces around all our bigs. And whoever gets down the floor the quickest, so they were getting transition jump shots. And that brought them back into the game. So I think if there was one thing that I could take, I'd want to take from this game, I'd want to take the fact that um, be controlled over the shots that you take. Um, Jesse Edwards, uh, there was a certain point where he was being let, he was being left open. I, I would have put a little bit more of an effort to try to let him just touch the ball. And I say that because when Jesse touches the ball, it pulls the defense towards him. And then your shooters get a chance to rotate, move, find a better shot closer to the basket. Um, let's see here. First comment of the night. Dave, it's felt like a tournament game. Survive in advance. That's exactly, you know, I'm glad you said that, David. That's exactly what it felt like. 
it felt like a uh, a tournament type game. But and the thing about the the tournament type games is, it's it isn't over until it's over. Shot the ball well. I mean, I, I'm not I'm not kidding the way that um, that uh, buddy buddy shot the ball. Let me just read to you um, the score here. So we have Swider with 14 points, Jimmy Beheim, 26 points, Jesse Edwards, 17 points, Gerard, 22 points, Buddy Beheim, 27 points. I mean, they had no answer for for Buddy Beheim. I mean, that, that, this was, if anything, that, this showed everyone that even though you knew who was going to take the shots down the end. Buddy has put the put Buddy Beheim put the, the team on his back and said, "Hey, listen, let's go do this. Let's finish this game. Let's win it." Um, and if I had to give a little advice to Jesse, I would say there were there were three times that um, Trace da- uh, Trace Jackson Davis was going to the basket. He was going to get a dunk. Hey, once you see him up there, turn around. There's no saying. We call it getting out of the picture. When uh, another guy is going up for a dunk, you don't want to be in that picture so you get out of the screen. There's nothing you can do to stop him. He's already up there. He's dunking. And um, my advice to to you, Jesse, uh, played a great game, rebounding, plug in the middle, blocking shots, four steals. I would say with you on the floor, Syracuse is a different, is a, is a much, much different team. A much more confident team, but uh, I don't want to take anything away from um, from from Benny Williams or Frank Anselm because they actually came in there, and, and and I want to emphasize Benny got was was brought in to box out uh, Trace Jackson Davis, and the last play of regular regular um, the regular game, and he got crushed underneath the basket. Which, by the way, anywhere else on the planet would have been over the back because he was he was sitting on Benny's shoulders. But Benny uh, went in there not quite as strong as he should have. Had he been a stronger box out, uh, he would have got a, he should have got a call. He should have got a call anyway because the guy the guy was sitting on his shoulder. But anyway, that didn't happen, and he had the fortitude to stay out there and play and rebound and play defense because. We needed every every ounce of his frame and Frank's frame to hold to hold this game off so that uh, Syracuse could beat this this tough Indiana team. So uh, yes, it felt like a tournament game, survive in, in advance, and that's the mentality that uh, we want this team to have. And it seems like they've uh, they've grown into it, and it was a pleasure to see. Let's see here. We got a couple of other comments. Uh, Dave had another comment. He said Swider hit some big shots. He still he still hasn't found his flow. I'm t- I, I, I'm going to tell you that uh, uh, Billy Owens went to see uh, went to see the the team play the first time, and he said that that. Um, Cole Swider probably had the, the prettiest jump shot, the smoothest jump shot that he'd ever seen. So I, I would, I'm going to have to agree with you. Uh, Cole is going to, he's trying to find where he fits in, but hey, it's it what's his six, seven games that he's been been with his team, and I would say that they've been put under the they've been put under the gun. So I think he's doing well, just to dig, to scratch and dig and 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 find his way there, and uh, he's going to come out on the right side of the ball. As with Syracuse, it took everybody's points to win this uh, to win this game today. righty, let's check on some of um, oh, here's a. Uh, I think it's it's a little bit too long. I'll read it. Uh, Keith Douglas, the other day, you said it takes about six to eight games for a team to find its identity. I hope they found some some of that tonight many positives uh many positive probably probably still needs to find a way to get more stops on defense on the defensive end you know what um 
there's a lot of positive things that happen. One, one of the toughest things that, that I find is um, our shot selection uh, from the point guard position. We've got to, we've got to do a better, a better job at, at shot selection. He's a great, he's a great shooter off the dribble uh, pitch back. Um, there's, there's three or four forced up shots towards the end of the game that were really, really tough. And um, instead of taking those shots, he's, he, he's, um, and I'm talking about George Gerard. He's strong enough to put that ball on the floor. And what he's been doing in the back in the, the past few games is he's he's been getting the ball to the bigs. I understand that at that point, Jesse Edwards was still in the game. Get the ball in there. Get get your get the opposing big uh, Trace Jackson to commit. Get the ball up on the glass, and you have an open shot from one of our bigs, a dunk or a putback. But uh, hey, something you got to work on. But it was uh, uh, <laughs> it was very it was, it was very good to see, and I, I think this is uh, how about that Donna <laughs> cardiac cues night, and that's what it was, you know. But I, I'm I'm very happy to see the. I was watching when the game was close like this. The one thing that I watched is I watched the composure between the players. Uh, there was never any doubt in their minds while they're out there playing, shooting foul shots. I mean, Jimmy had a Jimmy had a, a a great game. Buddy had a great game. Everybody that played tonight had to have a great game for Syracuse come away to win. And I'm uh, I, I'm just uh, ecstatic to see it. Let's see here. Uh, back to the comments. <laughs> Let's see here. All right, here we go. Happy with the win, but there are issues with the team. Um, hey, turnover prone. I, I don't know about turnover prone, but you know, during during a tough part of the game, you you would expect um, uh, your guard to uh, take very good care of the ball. That's what you want. That's what you want from any any guard handling the ball. So. We want to uh, cut back on the turnovers, uh, shot selection, and defense, getting to the uh, defensive rebounds. Um, all in all, got to take the bitter with the sweet. The bitter with the sweet. Um, possibly could have won the game in regular regulation time had we at Syracuse played a little bit more. I'm just thinking a little bit more that inside that inside outside game. Uh, get one of our other guys. Get one. Get either Cole or Jimmy or or Jesse. Uh, the ball around the basket. Crash the boards for offensive rebound. Challenge the big shot blocker. That leaves the other guys to box out two guys from Syracuse. Uh, naturally, that uh, I can say that now because I just saw it, and there's nothing that. Uh, not second guessing, coach. Just saying something that may have been helpful. Uh, let's see this next comment. Uh, okay, here we go. I think we, from Brad, it says that I think we need to close the lane behind the basket, and I've seen them run through our centers. What's your suggestion? Uh, you went 119 with Louis, so uh, you know you know more more on the lanes. Actually, it's 118. I wish we had that extra win. I would take it. Um, first thing that I'll tell you is, in order to close the lane behind the basket, they anybody can run behind the basket that they want to. You have to close the passing lane in front of the basket. Syracuse has got, has got to play that if you can control a 2-3 zone if, if you can control the foul line. And Syracuse is letting um, – their when their bigs come into the foul line and they catch the ball for Indiana University, they were very quick at catching the ball and just throwing it to their teammate who they knew was going to come on the fly strong, high, and hard. And dunk. So the best way to stop that, to stop that, 
that running around the back of the basket is stop, is cut the passing off. Uh, hand up on the passing, and or a man to, to control that high post. All righty. I hope that was helpful. Um, let's see here. Let's see here. Da, 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 da. Uh, Michelle seems to think you need to put Frank in sooner. Honey, for, first of all, you can't, I agree that he should get more playing time, but you can't put Frank in, you, sh you shouldn't put Frank in when Jesse's playing so well. Is that plain and simple? You practice hard, you work hard, you earn that starting position, and you should get to play every minute possible because realistically speaking, the thing that I look at when 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 Frank's on the floor, when Jesse's on the floor, there's one thing I look at immediately. When Jesse's on the floor, the, everybody tries to go. The ball comes into the paint. And they try to go around him. When Frank comes in the floor, everybody pushes the ball and goes right at him. That's a telltale sign that he's that he's not respected by the opposing team, and they're coming right at him. Um, so until he can get that respect or get stronger and be able to control that the center of that zone, uh, you know what? Uh, keep Jesse out there. But having said that, Frank played, got into the, the got into the overtimes. Had Frank played in the overtimes, and in, in, I would have put. Yeah, you're right. I would have give. I would have given Frank more time. See, the great thing that happened today is they got a chance to play. Benny and Frank got a chance to play in a tough game in overtime, and actually, without them, Syracuse would not have won. That's going to build their confidence. That's going to put them in the right frame of mind to understand the intensity of that this type of game. So when they come into another game, I doubt that you see Billy gets have somebody uh, Benny see somebody jump over his back and get a rebound to put a team in overtime. No, because he's going to understand. Hey, I'm coming into this game. It's all out warfare, and I got a scratch dig for every inch, and he'll understand that. And Frank understands that also because Frank turned this game up, and I appreciate, I appreciate the count. Frank turned his game up, and uh, if he can continue to work that hard and do it in practice also, hey, Coach Graham will play him. Uh, right here, let me check some more. All right. Oh, I like that. Let's see here. All righty. Here you go, Patrick. Do you feel Coach Beheim has the right kinds of defensive players to make his zone defense the kind of shutdown group it has been in the past? Um. I would say that it, it's really interesting because what we're getting, uh, Jesse's getting one or two blocks a game going to the going out to the corner, uh, which is normally an open shot. So he's he's improved on shutting down the corners. Um, hey, it's it's the seventh the seventh or eighth game. I keep I can't, uh, let me see three seventh game. So they're they're getting better. They had to get better just to keep. Indiana where they were the entire game. So they had to improve from the from the last game. So they're improving. They're they're working on this zone and it's going to be and it's going to have to be modified a little bit every time you play against uh different players because it was it was very clear that um the Trace Jackson Davis was going to be a load because he he gets around that basket and he puts in work. So Everybody knew that they had to stay close to him, pay attention to him, and not turn their back on him. And yet, still, he's so dynamic and quick and powerful. Uh, but we did just enough to stop him. Circus did just enough to, to slow him down so that we could uh, walk over this win. All right. Let's see here. We got a bunch of comments tonight. Thanks, everybody. Let's see. What we got uh, peeking in here. Um, 
John Richards, Andrew Harris, John, Justin, Dave, Christopher Bess. Thanks for, thanks for dropping by. Let's see here. Got new comments. Um, here we go. Great game. Syracuse needs muscle. Great game. And you know what? There's no saying. I wish you could go to the store and get them at Walmart, but they don't have those muscles at Walmart, Andrew. Uh, it was also good talking to you earlier today. Um, yeah, they're they're more so than I, I would say they need to play stronger, use the weight that you have, but make contact, initiate contact. Don't be afraid to bump into the other guy. Let him know you're out there on the floor. And you know what? If you want to, just hey, just bump into people. Contact convinces people not to want to want to come there. But uh and another thing is if you can't match them with muscle, match them with uh, over overwhelm them with your enthusiasm, with your intensity. That's one thing that will intensity over overcomes muscle. If you're if you're psyched out and you're moving and you're and you're initiating contact, you can we can we can live with what we got. Thanks, Andrew. Good talking to you. Brad, thanks. It does help a lot. And also, do you think a 3-2 zone would work on Indiana instead of our 1-3-1 or our 2-3 zone? It was a lot of sync. Um, you know what would help? What would help it what would help a lot against Indiana is if you can get, if you can get um we I think we need to communicate a little bit more because I know uh when I was playing in the middle of the zone. If at, at some point there was always a guy coming to the high post, I would ask the guards to at least poke him. Let him know that there's, there's somebody close to him. When, they, when he would come to that post, come by and just touch him, touch him on the body, touch him on the, on the, under the arm, swipe at the ball so that, they, so that you can understand that you don't have all day there to make that decision to pick the zone apart because if, you, if, they're, if they're not rushed, and you catch the ball at high post, you can pick a zone, a two, three zone apart. So um, instead of moving a whole bunch of pieces, have two guys talk. Uh, I would say, hey, Ed, or I'd say, hey, uh, Marty, or hey, Hal. When that guy catches the ball in a high post, instead of me running all the way up there, kind of when you see him coming, just drop back and stand there, get in his way, bump into him, just let him know. He's so, so he's just not so comfortable and freely moving through the middle of the zone. You'd be amazed at how much uh, it only takes a split second of help to uh, make this zone work properly. All right, let's see here. Uh, we got here, Pete, zone only does not work. Uh, Pete, you're wrong, zone only does work. It just did. I hate to say it, but uh, it just did. Um, Let's see here. <laughs> there you go, Andrew. When when you can't when you can't uh, when you can't fight everybody, just outrun them. That was my uh, that was my, my my saying was, you can't hit what you can't touch. So outrun them. So uh, I mean, it was great game. Uh, I would have liked to get that finished in regulation time because Syracuse played their kind of game. Kept things under control, but then we had uh, Jesse fall out and Cole fall out, and uh, our bench had to step in and did a phenomenal job of pulling this win out. Because, as I said before, I wrote on a couple a couple sheets here. Syracuse has to find an identity and find character, and you get uh, you get you find your identity and character by pulling out tough games like this. Because any team 
can lose a tough tough game, but it builds character with a team that could win one. And uh, you're talking about the zone doesn't work. I'm looking down here the, before the end of the uh, second overtime. The zone forced 22 turnovers from Indiana. I'm guessing that it uh, kind of works. Let's see here. Um, uh, interesting question, Keith. You think coach has more patience for mistakes made by the guards uh, for turnovers and poor shot selection than he does for mistakes made by the bigs on D? Um, the past few years, I felt like he has the bigs on a short lease. Well, this is the funny thing about that, and it, 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 it'll make sense once I explain this to you. When you're when you're a big, when a guard makes a mistake, there are many opportunities for the guys playing behind them to help them solve those problems. When a big makes a mistake, it normally ends up in a dunk or a quick basket there's something that creates a big problem for everyone so when you make a mistake at the guards at the guard from the guard position there's still a lot of basketball that can be made you make a bad you take a bad shot the whole team gets back it's just a shot um you make it you make a tough turnover the whole team gets back and you're playing defense but when you're when you make a mistake as a big those those rotation mistakes Normally, will end in 0.2 seconds with some guy dunking the ball so hard it almost cracks the floor. So I think that might have something to do with why he may may seem that he's harder on on bigs when they make mistakes than um, than the than the guards. Okay, hope that was helpful. Let's see here. I like this here. I'm glad Benny got a chance to get back in the game after he missed the box out. I think he will be an, an impact player by the end of the season. I tell you what, it's amazing how much growth that you can have after. Um, it's it, it's easy for somebody to fold after a bad play. I mean, he he got he was put in there to box out the strongest guy on the floor. The guy basically crushed him, and I say crushed him because it could have very, very easily been called an over-the-back offensive foul because he was laying all on, on Benny's shoulders. But in order to get in order to get that call, Benny's got to step in and hook that and hook that guy, box him out, and and push backwards so that it actually looks like he's falling over the top of him. And you got to accept that contact. He got back in the game. He started playing more physical, started getting more comfortable in these high in these in these tense situations where you've got to get the ball. We need the ball to get down the floor to be, get in a situation to score. So yeah, it was uh I was very happy to see him get a chance to redeem himself and then walk away with a win. Very, very good. Let's see. Read through here. Da, 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 da. New comments. I think that's about it. So uh, thanks, everybody, for joining me. And uh, special thanks to the Clam Bar, Ruin Road, North Syracuse, New York, the biggest little place in Syracuse. Uh, Syracuse came away with a... Oh, uh, such an impressive win tonight in double overtime. Uh, they won the game one, one twelve to one ten over Indiana University. And shout out to Mike Woodson, who was my teammate when I played for the USA national team during the summer of '77. So Mike Woodson, good seeing you. Your team played well. 
I hope you win all the rest of your games, just not against Syracuse. All righty. Thanks, everyone. Have a fantastic night.